There's more to walleye fishing than dragging a live bait rig with a red-tailed chub, putting a leech under a bobber, or pulling a spinner with a nightcrawler. We keep doing the same thing the same way in the same places. Nothing ever changes. And it's time to change the game. Get involved. Try something different this year. Get in, into doing something you never did before. Beautiful, man. And it's going to change your entire outlook on walleye fishing. Welcome to Angling Buzz TV presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Nick Linder. Now if you're a longtime fan of this show, you'll notice that the format is gonna be a little bit different this season. Obviously there's a lot going on right now in the world and we don't need to get into all that, but you're gonna notice that the format of the show this season is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna feature a little bit more social distancing. Now the topic of this week's show is gonna be a really, really popular one and that is how to become a better walleye angler. Now chances are you're probably going to be familiar with our guest host this week. It's Al Linder, one of the best walleye anglers that I know. Now Al, if you had to identify a few critical aspects of walleye fishing, what would they be? Well, you got to keep in mind that walleyes move around a lot, way more than most other freshwater game fish. They're constantly on the go. After the spawn, every place they're at and what they're doing is based around one thing, available food. It could be perch, it might be shiners, which is typical in spring of the year, like we're fishing right now. There's a lot of shallow water walleyes, there's a lot of shallow water forage, and uh, I mean, there's a great bite going on a vast majority of the lakes that we fish in uh, a water that's like 15 feet and shallower, not to mention an outstanding night bite right now. So uh, uh, keep in mind that where the forage is at is where the walleyes are at. And early like this, there's a lot of walleyes in shallow water. And when I'm talking shallow water, on some lakes, even on a day like this, bright sun and no wind, I can catch some of them fish, even in clear water lakes, as shallow as four, five, and six feet of water. Done it regularly. Keep an open mind. Yeah, that's some really good stuff, Al. Now, we've covered down on location for walleyes, but what would you say is another big factor to catching walleyes this time of year? It's really simple, it's boat control. That's what separates good fishermen from great fishermen. In a given season, there's so many ways you can present lures to catch walleyes. Trolling is an example. Am I pulling boards, lead core? Am I flatlining, a combination of any of these? Is it plugs? Is it live bait and spinners? What about live bait rigging on a bottom, pulling a bottom bouncer? A back trolling is an art in itself that a lot of people are not really, really good at as long as it's been around and so much is on it is still is a fine-tuned system of, of boat control. Jigging, shallow and deep. Boat control is critical. You might be uh, spot locked in a spot working a school of fish. And it is so important to be able to make cast, to duplicate that cast back to back to back. I can't say enough about boat control. Again, that's what separates a good fisherman from a great fisherman. Yeah, those are some great points. You know, in my opinion, the best wall anglers are the ones who are the best at boat control. Now, what about the presentation factor? You know, there's a lot of different ways to catch walleyes, whether you're talking about live bait, plastics, trolling. What are your thoughts on that topic? There's no question that live bait fishing and walleye fishing has grown hand in hand. It is a tradition that has been here for many, many years. And for a lot of anglers, that's a hard tradition to break. Now, in the past 10 years, we've learned a whole lot more about triggering walleyes to bite on artificials. Uh, ways you can snap jig hair jigs or, or different kinds of plastic on faster moving baits, uh, uh, lipless crankbaits like rip and wraps, and, and there are vibrating blade baits. The list goes on and on. There's methods of speed trolling with certain kind of baits that you can tick bottom with, baits that have different reaction built in. It's the reaction bite that we're learning and getting better at every single year. The game is changing in a world of walleye fishing and more anglers than ever are saying, wow, this really does work better than night crawlers, leeches, and minnows. Yep, you're right about that, Al. There's a lot of advantages to using artificials. It allows anglers to fish quickly and cover a lot more water. Now, 
Don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have more strategies on how to become a better walleye angler as the angling buzz continues. From the kennel to the coop, whatever the season, Fleet Farm has everything to keep your animals happy and healthy. Whether it's keeping the backyard birds well-fed season, mastering those retrieval skills season, or wondering who takes care of who season, there's a reason people say if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it, because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Some lodges are just a cut above. Hawk Lake is one of those. They're the only Orvis endorsed lodge in all of Ontario. And they're the four time finalists for the best Orvis lodge in all of North America. They feature cordon blue trained chefs and offer some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. You can target trophy walleye, smallmouth bass, pike and lake trout on any of their 19 private lakes. Whether you fish with traditional gear or love fly fishing, Hawk Lake has you covered. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose outerwear that works. Technical apparel. Rain gear. Soft shells. Sunwear. When you need to stay comfortable all day, choose Blackfish, because you can't choose the weather. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now next up, we're going to be heading up to Leech Lake, one of the best walleye fisheries in Minnesota. Covering over 112,000 acres, Leech is not only big, it fishes big. Meaning a large portion of that 112,000 acres has habitat that walleyes love to roam. So if you're planning on tackling leech this season, it's best to break it down into fishable portions. Starting in Walker Bay, the southern half has the deepest water in all of leech, with tons of rock and sand points, humps, and flats. Lindy rigging large chubs is often deployed here with great success. Most of the northern half is under 10 feet in depth and is a great early season option on the flats south and east of Sand Point or in the depression off of Oak Point. Don't forget your slip bobbers and leeches if you head to this area. Heading through the narrows north of Pine Point is the Goose Island Flats. This large area all the way to big hardwoods is rather featureless, with most anglers drifting light jigs or lindy rigs and shiners. Sucker Bay has a long sharp drop off down the middle of it, running all the way from first duck to third duck. Under low light conditions and windy days, walleyes will often cruise on top of the sandgrass flats. When it's calm and sunny, they'll often move deeper off that break. There's lots of ground to cover, so pulling crankbaits or later in the season spinners are great options. Portage Bay was known for its weed walleyes along the cabbage edges up and down the bay. With the weeds thinned down by rusty crayfish, subtle rock ridges on the flats come more into play. Side imaging on your electronics can greatly speed up this process in finding these fish holding areas. The center section of leech from Stony Point to the Annex contains the 40-foot trench with sharp sand breaks and a number of large boulder humps scattered over miles and miles of a 20-foot flat. It takes a while for the walleyes to move into some of the center humps, so you might want to wait to check them out starting mid to late June. Now the southern part of the main lake, from Pelican Island to Whipple Beach, and from Horseshoe Bay to Bear Island, has more structure than you could fish in a lifetime. The good news is that means there's lots of options to fish 
depending on the conditions. If it's calm and sunny, the south and the west edge has a lot of deep water structure to fish. When the wind picks up, start chunking the shallows with jigs and plastics or crankbaits. There's also miles of mid-range flats to drift if that's what you prefer to do. That's a general breakdown of Leech Lake's incredible walleye fishery by area. Our advice, if you're heading to Leech for the very first time, is to pick an area and learn it well. Each area has a good population of walleyes, and chances are you'll find the sweet spot that you'll have all to yourself. Yeah, if you're going to fish on a really big body of water like Leech Lake, it might be a little daunting when you look at how much water there is to cover, but if you just focus on a small part of the lake, you are going to catch more fish. Now, don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Tired of doing this? Get a can of this and spend more time doing this. Seafoam helps engines start easier, run smoother, and last longer. Seafoam. Seafoam! Help your engine run smoother and last longer with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Just pour it in. Seafoam works to clean your fuel system, clean your oil system, and stabilizes fuel up to two years. Make the proven choice. Seafoam Motor Treatment. Available at Fleet Farm. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Right now, it's time for our Buzz Bite Reports. We're heading over to Michigan with Captain Ben Wolf. All across the state, we have some fantastic options. Many anglers are taking advantage of the fantastic walleye bite that's going on at night. They're trolling body baits and doing extremely well. However, as we get into that later post-spawn period and the early summer pattern, don't be afraid to go during the day. That bite will only get better and better. The smallmouth bass all across the state is doing really well on the inland lakes, as well as uh, bodies of water like Lake St. Clair, Grand Traverse Bay. You know, big fish are coming in, those big pre-spawn, uh, you know, females. This is a great time to go for them. And also, we're starting to see some fantastic Lake Michigan uh, salmon action, you know. We already have had a 30-pound fish caught, and uh, we're looking at another fantastic year for some big, big king salmon, and uh, hopefully some, some fun coho salmon uh, action coming up later, too. The salmon fishing like that looks like a lot of fun. Those are big, big fish. And up next, we're heading to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. The bite is on up here on Lake Vermilion. The resorts are open. The 
guide's got the green light to go, so that's all good news. We got warmer weather coming here, so that'll kick up the crappie bite in the afternoons, you know, get into those south facing soft bottom bays and the crappies are on the move, so you should have some good luck there. Walleye bite is kind of all over the place. We're catching fish from anywhere from three feet to 35 feet in shallow. You know, that three to 12 foot stuff, slip bobbers are working, plastics, small jigs, small rainbows. Lindy rigs too are working well. Uh, I like going with a 3 8 ounce slip sinker. Again, the depths on the Lindy rig stuff, that's all over the place too, 12 to 35 feet. Like I said, with this warmer weather coming up, should get some of those big females going, and uh, things are really shaping up to be another great year up here on Vermilion. It sounds like the walleye bite up on Vermilion is excellent everywhere. Up next, we have Brian Brosdahl on Leech Lake. Over the weekend, some of the walleyes were spawned out and were recuperating, they weren't biting. The early spawners were showing up on some of the spots. Hard bottom areas with cara and rocks mixed were really good. A main lake points that have these features in eight to 12 feet of water, we're producing fish. I'm using a Northland Longshank Fireball. This is Leech Lake candy for big walleyes. That's one of them, and here's another one. I put a shiner on to show you how I hook them. I got them double hooked, but I like that stand-up fireball sometimes. Works really good, has a little wobble going through the water. Uh, crappies and bluegills are biting in uh, six to 10 feet of water right now. They're gonna move up and get ready to spawn crappies when the water temperature is unilaterally in the 60s. Uh, bluegills a little later in the 70s. Right now there's not a lot of weed growth, uh, so looking and finding cabbage or any type of vegetation can be really good and conducive to catching fish. Thanks, bro. And next, we're joining Doug Wagner over in Green Bay. Uh, I would say the first things first are water temps. Our water temps are anywhere right now from 52 degrees all the way down to maybe 44 degrees in the upper part of the bay, depending where you want to be. Lower part of the bay is warmer, upper part of the bay is cooler. That being said, we're now finally kind of out of our post-spawn transition mode. A lot of the smaller fish are in the lower part of the bay, can be caught really easily trolling, or if you still want to cast ripping wraps, that's obviously an option as well. Um, if you want to target those bigger fish, you can move up to the northern part of the bay, look for those rock to sand transitions and still catch fish on number seven ripping wraps and big swim baits as well. So a lot of opportunity coming here in the bay. We've got some really good weather in the future. If you guys want to get over here, it's a great time to do it. On the lake, in the woods, or on the ice, keep powered up with Bold North Outdoors portable power stations. Our rugged multi-service power station is marine grade, weatherproof and powered by long-lasting lithium phosphate batteries. Charge cell phones, tablets and GoPros, or power fans, lights, fish finders, underwater cameras and more. Recharge anywhere with our solar panel charger. Wherever your adventure takes you, you'll have current to be connected with Bold North portable power stations. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay, or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Customer first, that's their mission at Don DeLinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Don DeLinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Don DeLinger difference today.
Now it's time for this week's cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. Now today we are talking about how to become a better walleye angler and you can't talk about walleye fishing without talking about jigs. I have the fireball jig from Northland. So as you can see here we have the short shank jigs which are great for live bait fishing but you also have the long shanks. This jig was designed specifically for fishing spot tail shiners, but it's also great for fishing plastics with the long shank. Now another long shank jig that we've had a lot of success with over the years is the VMC Moon Eye Jig. Now this particular jig is a little bit different in that it's not a round ball head jig like the Fireball Jig, but it actually has a little bit of an aspirin shaped head, which gives it a little bit of a side to side action when you rip it. Moving over to another jig-like presentation, right here we have the Northland Limber Leech. Now what you'll do with this bait is you'll cast it out and you slowly drag it back to the boat and oftentimes when the fish are keying in on something on the bottom that kind of looks like a leech, they won't be able to resist this particular presentation. Now another category of baits you're going to want in your box this year are hard baits or crank baits. And this one right here, the Rapala Shad Wrap, is a proven killer. Now one thing that I would always recommend, especially when you're fishing crankbaits, is to use a color that's just a little bit different than what everybody else is using. I would go for some custom colors. I know that Fleet Farm has a handful of custom colors in these shad wraps that I would take a look at. Moving over to the rod reel line side of things, right here I have a St. Croix Triumph rod. This particular rod is six foot six, medium power, fast action. And to me, this is a really, really good all around walleye fishing rod, whether you're fishing jigs or crankbaits. Now I would pair this particular rod with a 2000 size reel. This one right here is the Daiwa Regal LT. And what LT means is simply light and tough. But what you need to know about this reel is that it has an extremely smooth drag and is a really great light line reel for the price. And speaking of line, here's a great option to spool up with the Northland Bionic Walleye Braid. But I have a couple options here. I have the six pound and the eight pound. Both are right in that sweet spot, I would say, for a lot of these presentations we're talking about right here. The reason why I like braid is because the no stretch properties of it. You can feel everything. It's particularly useful to have that extra feel when you're jig fishing. Now, another super important thing when you're walleye fishing this time of year is to have excellent boat control. Now, the iPilot system that comes in a lot of the Minn Kota trolling motors really helps you keep your boat on the hot spot. And the best way to do that, if you're walleye fishing, in my opinion, is using a remote, like this micro remote right here. And this will hook up to a number of different trolling motors that are compatible with the iPilot system. Really, really useful when you're walleye fishing. Now, speaking of boats, you want your engine running well this year so that you don't end up with problems on the water. For that, I would recommend the Seafoam Marine Pro fuel treatment. Now, all you gotta know about this bottle right here is that it was designed specifically for your outboard, and all you have to do is pour it in the fuel tank. Now, once you've caught a mess of walleyes, chances are you might wanna bring a few home for the table. And what I always like to have with me, whether I'm ice fishing or fishing in open water, is a little folding knife, just like this one. This particular knife is the Bubba 5-inch Lucky Lou. Now what I like about this particular knife is it stores extremely easy. You can use it for a number of different things, including cleaning your catch at the end of the day. Now one big key to being a better walleye fisherman is making sure that the fish that you hook up with actually end up in the boat. And for that, you gotta make sure that you have a good net. Now this particular net is the Fortis net from Clam. And what I like about this net is it's fairly lightweight. It's got about the right size hoop for walleyes, bass, etc. And it's got an extendable option to net fish a little bit farther away from the boat, especially if you're reaching around the outboard or whatnot. Now one thing that you might not notice about this net when you're at the store is that if you flip it around on the back side, it actually has a little ruler printed across the back of it. Now this is great for measuring your fish in a pinch. Now if you're like most walleye fishermen, chances are you can't exactly pick the days that you wanna go walleye fishing. You might have to go on the weekend or on your day off. So when it's raining out, when the weather is rough, you're gonna want a rain suit. This particular suit is the Blackfish 
Torrent Rain Suit. Now, this thing has all the bells and whistles you're gonna need. It's got waterproof zippers, it's extremely lightweight, breathable, and most importantly, it keeps you dry. Now, along the same lines of going out in rough conditions, it pays to have some sort of suspension system in your boat seats. Now, one option is the Smooth Moves Ultra. They're fully adjustable, and we actually have them in quite a few of our boats. They're easy to install, and they'll save your back. All the products that we just talked about are available at your local Fleet Farm store or fleetfarm.com. Now, coming up next is the Technique of the Week. Hi, this is Joel Nelson. I'm here to talk a little bit about keeping walleyes in perfect condition so when you cut them up and eat them, they're going to taste great. We've been out this afternoon, had a great day, caught a lot of fish, I have a live well full of them right now. We're just about ready to head in and that's the perfect time to bleed them. Now, this actually stems from an ancient Japanese technique called Ikejime. It's gotten a lot of press in the gourmet food uh, portions of YouTube lately. All it is, is getting fish in perfect condition to make sushi. Now, we don't need to do that with these walleyes. All we need to do is bleed them, but that's nothing new. People have been bleeding walleyes for a long time, but I'm gonna show you the right way and how to do it. All right, so I'm gonna start right here where it narrows down underneath the gill plates and cut all the way down and drop it in the live well. Now, what that's gonna allow is that fish in the live well to expunge all of its blood, and that's gonna make for a snow white, perfectly clean filet Blood is where the bacteria lives, and obviously bacteria isn't something we want in our food, so that's gonna lead to much better tasting walleye fillets. So I'm gonna fillet two fish for you. One of the ones that we have bled previously, and one of the ones that we didn't bleed, and I really want you to focus on the difference because it is important. So this is the unbled fish. I'm just gonna take the side off. And now, I'm gonna show you one of the blood fish. As you can see, the difference is pretty stark. The fish that wasn't bled obviously has all kinds of blood throughout not just its lateral line, but all throughout the meat in the filet. And that's the important part because blood can be washed off by water, but when it's inside the flesh, it's a little bit harder to get out. In contrast, that fish that was bled has literally pushed all the blood out of its body. And like I said before, blood is where the bacteria lives. Get rid of it and your fish will taste better. Those are some really good tips there from Joel. Just remember that whiter fillets are tastier fillets. Now, if you're looking for any more tips on how to prepare your fish, you can head over to our website, anglingbuzz.com, and we got you covered. Now, on next week's show, we're gonna be talking all about modern electronics. Also, remember to clean, drain, and dry next time you're at the boat ramp to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Well, that about wraps things up for this week's show. Thank you for watching. I'm Nick Linder, and we will see you next week. Want to learn how to catch more and bigger fish like largemouth and smallmouth bass? Or maybe you want to learn how to catch big walleye, monster catfish, or giant panfish all year round. Well, we got the place for you. Introducing the Fish Head Video Library. Now you can enjoy hour after hour of educational videos right on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, or even stream videos right to your TV. Is bass fishing your gig? We'll teach you everything you need to know about catching more largemouth and smallmouth bass. Or maybe you want to learn how to catch panfish like crappies and giant bluegills. Yep, we got you covered. After watching our panfish videos, you'll know when, where, and how to catch panfish no matter what the season. Want to catch a muskie, the fish of 10,000 casts? Watch our experts crack the code on muskies. Apply what you learn in our muskie videos and your first oh muskie could easily happen awesome. well before the 10,000 yeah. cast mark. Yeah, awesome. Pike, covered. Ice fishing, got it. River fishing, on it. Or maybe you just want to catch big fish. Yep, we got that covered too. Check out Fishhead TV to rent, buy, or become a Fishhead member today.